So hunting deer in the pine trees. I'll start by saying that I am no expert by any means. I'm just a regular guy that likes to deer hunt. Uh, been hunting my whole life. I started when I was a little kid going with my dad, like most everybody else does. And uh, you know, it took a break in my teenage years, but when I really got back into it in my early 20s, I uh, soaked up a lot of information from all the guys that I knew, and I tried everything I could to research online when I was first getting serious about it. But there's hardly anything out there, so most everything I've learned is passed down knowledge or trial and error. What I've learned from mistake after mistake after mistake, uh, hours and hours wasted in the stand. So through lots and lots of time of trial and error and uh, making all the mistakes that somebody inexperienced makes, I would like to say that I know a little bit about what I'm talking about, but I'm in no means an expert. So, you know, you don't take this to heart. There is an exception to every rule. And I'm sure that, you know, somebody out there knows a whole lot more than I do. But I'm willing to pass on, or I want to pass on, uh, what little bit that I do know and try to start uh, a series that's more of an educational how-to for down here in the deep south. This segment is going to be based around uh, pine trees because I don't, you really can't go anywhere in the southeast without running into pine trees at some point or another. And I know a ton of people just hate pine trees. They're, they're no good. I wish I had more big hardwoods, uh, more oaks. But the truth is, if, if I had 100 acres of white oaks, when it was acre season, well, there's 100 acres of white oaks to choose from. So there's no way to pattern the deer. The deer are gonna be everywhere. They might be at this tree in this corner or 50 acres over that way at that tree. There's, there's really no telling, but when you've got mostly pine trees and just a few oaks, you can narrow your tree stand selection down to just those couple of oaks because if those are the only ones in the area and they're dropping, you can bet that the deer are gonna be there. Cobwebs. Let's get into how I hunt uh, in pine trees or around pine trees or just uh, use pines to my advantage. And uh, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Clear cuts. When loggers completely cut an area and uh, they leave behind what we call a clear cut or a cut over and uh, for the most part and like I said there's an exception to every rule but for most part a clear cut is just worthless I mean I know there's gonna be those guys that say oh well I've sat watching a 60 acre clear cut in January in the middle of the rut and watched a, a buck chasing those out well you know in the rut anything goes everything that I'm gonna touch on is gonna be more based around what works most of the time and not just a every now and then type of thing. I, I don't uh, advise hunting a clear cut over a clear cut um, and it's it, it's a waste. You know if you've got a 500 acre property and 200 acres is clear cut well that's just 200 acres of property that's wasted but at the same time that's 200 acres that you can basically delete and you know that it's going to push more deer onto your remaining 300 acres so that being said you know it, it a clear cut can help you in a way um, because you can negate the property that has been cut and know that your chances of uncut property uh, uh, your chances of seeing deer are better also another thing about clear cuts is that in a lot of ways they create funnels clear cuts have no value at all i mean that first year when it's just bare dirt you know ground zero it's it's horrible there's just there's nothing so i stay away from them um, i will however take advantage of the way they pinch down land you know if you've got a clear cut on one side and a little patch of woods strip of woods clear cut on the other, I mean, that, there's your bottleneck, there's your funnel. Use that to your advantage. So um, another thing to talk about is whenever loggers come down here and cut pine, 
they almost never touch the, uh, the creek bottoms. I mean, there's some rule it has to be 30 yards to each side or 15 yards, something like that. But a lot of people call them creek bottoms, uh, SMZ for screen management zone. Uh, they have many different names, but we'll just stick with SMZs. So SMZs can become basically your highways in the woods. It doesn't matter if an SMZ is surrounded by hardwood, if it's surrounded by short pines, clear cut, um, middle-aged pines, mature pines, uh, field, it doesn't matter. Those SMZs, they can follow that creek and that creek always brings life in the woods. So there's always gonna be a lot of green briar, just a lot of good browse for them to eat on. You really want to stay away from an SMZ if it's just a little bitty tiny stream. That's, you want something that's at least you know, flowing, an actual flowing, small brook, creek, whatever you want to call it. And uh, all the way up to something that's plenty big enough. Uh, plenty big enough that, you know, it can change the way the deer pattern, uh, where they cross, find the crossings. So SMZs essentially or like a highway through the woods for deer. Um, not only have I found most of my best rubs uh, in those creek fingers, those SMZs, but I've killed probably half of all of my good bucks uh, using an SMZ to my advantage in one way or another. Short pines are really good because uh, you've got enough sunlight that still comes through, so you've got your natural browse on the forest floor something for the deer to eat and also it just gets so thick and nasty that a lot of times short pines are a good bedding area and uh i love to hunt close to bedding areas but i try my best to stay out of them and uh really down here in the south the deer can bed wherever they want but they're almost always going to bed in the pines somewhere usually short pines uh, it's just so thick and nasty then you have your one-year-old clear cut, which has a lot of nutritional value to it. Lots of natural browse, uh, weeds. I mean, I could name off 20 of them. I just call them a field full of allergies because really that's what they are. But uh, there's still not a lot of cover, but finally you have uh, an open food source for the deer. It's basically one giant buffet of everything. Now two and three year old clear cuts are really more what I like uh, because it's it's food and cover at the same time. Now some clear cuts that are managed properly have been burned, replanted, uh, those are the good ones. Uh, there's also some that have just let grown wild, whatever natural, whatever happens, whatever happens. And those will almost always be unhuntable for 10 or 15 years because inevitably they will be so thick that you just can't do anything but let the deer bed in it. Once the pine trees get a little older and they get more middle-aged, the, um, the canopies basically block out the sunlight and the forest floor just turns into a desert. It's just a bunch of pine straw. And, uh, really nothing for the deer to eat. There's no cover, so there's no reason for them to be there. Mature pines are the same way in that if they don't come and do a good thinning, then there's no sunlight reaching the forest floor. And so uh, it's a wildlife, uh, uh, the biological desert. So, uh, but if they do do a good thinning, then mature pines become really fun to hunt in because uh, you've got all the sunlight hitting the, hitting the floor there. You got a lot of good food, which is gonna grow up, get thick, make cover. And mature pines, you can slap a climber on, go to town wherever you want. You can pick this pine or that pine, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. They're all nice and straight and perfect and easy to climb. Granted, they're noisy. I mean, bad noisy. I've heard guys a quarter mile away from me scraping their way up a pine tree. 
you know, while I'm sitting there in my ladder stand and I've been quiet as a mouse getting in. I've learned through years of trial and error that to hunt in big timber, you have to be able to go into a piece of property, uh, use your Google Maps, um, scout, walk, ride, talk to the people around it, the people that have hunted before it, and walk in, look at a big mess, and be able to delete 90% of that timber and only focus on 10%. Because it's so hard to pattern deer in big wide open woods. That, I mean, basically they could be anywhere, but you know, you don't want to hunt based off of luck. You want to hunt based off of certain rules of thumb. And those certain rules of thumb are you have to look for the bottlenecks, pinch points, food sources, and uh, waterways, SMZs or creeks.